everybody. Um, in this video here, I've got two sections to this video. Uh, the first part is going to be mainly the assistant director's uh, position and kind of responsibilities in pre-production and getting the script breakdown done. I'm showing specifically Celtics. This can also be done in something like Movie Magic, which is used mainly in the industry, but I'm kind of showing this in uh, specifically how to do a script breakdown in Celtics. Um, then the second part of this, make sure you watch the second part of this. It goes into the pre-production process after the, the script breakdown is done and everything is scheduled. Then the director and the DP and the director of photography will get together and start creating a shot list. I go through that process in the second video. Uh, so this first section of the video is mainly assistant director responsibilities in uh, pre-production. And then the second video is going to be for directors and DPs in pre-production, getting everything ready to shoot, uh, visiting, the, visiting the locations, creating a shot list, and uh, the day of the shoot when you're shooting, uh, what the assistant camera will be doing in um, during the production to, to mark the shots for each camera. So, so enjoy it, and if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, I'm going to be showing how to do a few different responsibilities of a, what's, what would be considered the responsibilities of a first assistant director for a set. And one of those first things I'm going to show is actually uh, pre-production. We'll show a little bit of production stuff as well. Uh, but right now I want to show the pre-production uh, responsibilities for the first AD. This little PowerPoint here I'm going to bring up and kind of talk through it. So first of all, in pre-production and making a film, and you have a finished script, once the script is locked, that means basically that it's not going to be getting changed. First thing you want to do is you want to be adding scene numbers to the scene headings. And you're going to lock those numbers to the scene headings. They pretty much stay permanent throughout the entire shoot. And I'm going to be basing a lot of this off of uh, Celtics or Celtics, however you pronounce it. I decided, I decided to call it Celtics is what I've been calling it. But you now some people will argue with me and tell me that's not how you pronounce it. I don't care. I'm just going to show how to, show how to do a script breakdown with this. So you're going to give each scene its own permanent number and it's going to stay that way uh, from from the beginning of the shoot or, or once you get the shoot the scene locked if you're going to add scene you're going to revise the script and let me show I've got a script here I'm going to open up this is in the software Celtics here and this script has all been broken down it's been scheduled and everything I'm going to show you basically how to do a script breakdown from from scratch what you'll end up doing in in, in Celtics uh, first of all Celtics is capable if you're using the desktop software it is capable of doing several scripts per project every time you save a project you can do several scripts here is an example here is the regular script right there and then we have a short script version uh, that was the one that was actually shot here so let's go to Actually, let me bring in uh, one that's not broken down yet and show you what we mean by script breakdown. First of all, first of all, in Celtics, we are going to assign these scenes numbers. And actually, Celtics kind of does that automatically. If you go over to the side here, you'll notice that these, that all these scenes have a scene number, but this is going to be basically kind of made permanent. I'm going to go up to Script, go up to Format Options, click on Format Options, and we're going to tell it to show scene numbers. I like to have it show on both columns just when I'm working in it electronically here and I haven't printed yet just so I can quickly see and you hit OK. For every scene heading, for every time you switch scenes and that's basically either a switch in location or time, you're going to have a new scene number there. There's scene number two, scene number three, scene number four, scene number five and so on. And down here if you want to navigate quickly to, to those scenes you can go to a scene just double click on it and it will actually jump to that scene and jump to that scene heading. Now, once you've started doing script breakdown, keep in mind that once the script breakdown has occurred and you've started scheduling, the numbers can no longer be changed here. The, the scene headings can no longer be changed. So, so, so if you're going to be adding any scenes, you're going to go up to a script. Uh, and this is, like I said, you can add scenes all you want, but then once the first AD grabs a hold of this, the scene numbers become permanent because once these are scheduled, if you add a scene, watch what happens if we add a scene here. Say so after this, we wanted to say, well, let me move up here. So let's say after this scene here, we wanted to add one more exterior uh, of another location. If I press return and return again, like you do in Celtics, you press return and return again, it's going to bring up a new scene heading here. And if I start typing interior, look what happens. Uh, the scene number is now three, and everything from here on down has just changed. The scene numbers have updated this number by one. And uh, if you've scheduled these things, and say you scheduled these things where you said scene three, we're going to be shooting on Monday, and uh, now all of a sudden this is no longer scene three, and that organization just got all screwed up. So you have to be very aware of this if the scene, if uh, the revisions are going to be made. If you're going to revise the script while you're already in pre-production and production, what you do in Celtics is you go into script and go into revision mode. 
revision mode, and it's got these revision colors kind of in order that they usually do on sets where they'll, they'll print out new revisions. Uh, first, first copy of the script original is in white, and then blue, pink, yellow, they'll print these out on the new pages, and that's how they know they're working with the most recent copy because they know if they're, how many revisions they've done, if they're working on green or gold, and they'll actually be printed out on those, um, on those colors. And then that's really during production in the middle of a shoot. You can name the re revision up here, but make sure you lock the scenes. What the lock scenes does when you enter revision mode is let's show you. This has to be locked though. Let's hit OK. Make sure that's check marked. Now watch what happens as we add a scene number here. Now watch what happens when we go after a scene here. Hit return. Hit return again. And we start typing in a new scene. Notice it did not change any scene numbers after this. It added uh, an a letter onto the end of the number here, and this is 2A, and if you add a new scene after that, it'll be 2B and 2C and so on. So that way, once you've started scheduling, it did not change the scene numbering after that, and the scheduling will not be screwed up. Now when I say we're shooting scene 3 originally, and that was scheduled, and somebody goes in and revises the script, we just didn't screw up all the numbers, and we're not shooting the wrong scenes on the wrong days. And another thing that it will do is you make revisions to a scene. It will have the revisions in the blue or in the color that it's going to have. It's going to put the revision in the color in the order that you do these revisions up here. Revision 1 is in blue, so anything I start typing out, the man, blah, 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 it's all going to be highlighted in blue. So you can see the new revisions added to the script. And when these are printed out, it will actually print these out. The new scenes, you'll see those revisions. This should be printed out on blue paper, by the way. And when it is printed out, it will have little stars over here uh, that show the new revision. So we know what, re what has been revised and what has been added to the script. OK, so we gave each scene its number. The next step of the pre-production process for the responsibility of first assistant director is to perform a script breakdown. We're going to show this process now. We're going to basically what a breakdown is is it shows everything in the script, in the entire script that is needed to shoot every single individual scene. So it's going to break it down. So say scene one, it'll show the location, the actors, the props, set dressing, and everything that is needed to shoot that scene. And we're going to do that to the entire script. Whether you're doing this for a short film or a feature, the script breakdown is going to be very is going to be incredibly important in figuring that out. So I'm going to go up to script. Let's turn off the reset the revision mode. I'm just going to reset that right now. So within Celtix, this is the way we do a script breakdown. This is your script breakdown tab over here. This is your area on the side. And the part that's the actual script breakdown tab is going to be this far right one right here. If you hover your mouse over it, it says breakdown. I'm going to click on that, and this is our breakdown tab. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start figuring out everything that we need for scene number one here. First of all, right here, this is the first and first thing that we need. This is a location. So what I'm going to do is go down here and find location. I'm going to highlight it. Actually, it added this weird little character down here. This is really not a character, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll right click on it and remove. If you have anything weird like that, you can just right click on it and remove. But I'm going. I've got the garage highlighted location highlighted and now I add. It just added the garage as a location for scene number one. And notice it coded it here, this, this color up here. And each item, location is going to have its own color. Everything in down here will have its own color. Okay, so now we've got a man in his 40s sits at a workbench. So a man is the next thing we need. But I'm going to move down the line here and I see Cabe right there. That is the man. So I'm going to do the character name there. Instead of a man, I'm just going to, I'm going to grab his name, who is Cabe. And that is a character. So I'm going to go up to character, highlight that, and add. So now, so far, I've got Cabe as a character and a garage as a location. So far, to shoot this scene, we need these two items. Cabe is a tall, skinny man dressed in a dark blue work coat. Right there, dark blue work coat. We need a dark blue work coat for this character Cabe. That is wardrobe. So I'm going to go down to wardrobe, highlight it, and add dark blue work coat. Now, first of all, that is Cabe's. I got a couple of description items here as well, which drapes all the way down to his knees. So there's a bit of a description there, and there's also the character that this belongs to. I'm going to highlight this right here and just do Command C or Control C to copy. And I'm going to add this to the description of this dark blue work, work, work coat. I'm going to give notes to wardrobe so they know what they need to use here. 
And I didn't actually choose this for a breakdown item here. I just copied the text because I'm going to actually go to my dark blue work coat and I'm going to double click on it. And what this does is it opens up a master catalog for the entire script. Master catalog shows every single item that you're going to need to shoot this entire movie in one big catalog. And this will be separated down into wardrobe. It'll separ be separated by wardrobe. It'll be separated by by character and props and a whole bunch of different things. Right now I've got my dark blue work coat. And I'm going to add some description here for the uh, wardrobe people here. I'm going to uh, command V and paste uh, and I'm going to explain this is for Cabe which drapes all the way down to the knees. So I've added that description. Anything that you can think of that's in the script that implies any sort of description you're going to add to this area here. And you can actually put it down here as well. You can do a pick list and you can find the characters that are in the script. I've got Cabe right there. You can just check mark and hit OK. And it actually adds it, or you can just put it in the description right there as well. Shows who it's worn by, and if there's any other details, the, actually the wardrobe department can come in and add this in later as well to have all those details in there. But right now, that, that's what you basically need to do. Show who the wardrobe is for, and any basic description that you find in the script. I'm going to go back to the script here, and that has now been added to wardrobe, that description. He also sports a dirty face. So the dirty face is going to be makeup. I'm going to go up to Makeup, highlight that, hit Add, and if you need to add more description to that, double click on it, and you can put the description down here. This is for Cabe as well. So they know who the makeup's going to be for, so they can prepare and have the right makeup for that day when you shoot that scene. Go back to the script. Notice how that's highlighted there. This is highlighted, and these are all color-coded. Characters are in this reddish color. Then you got kind of blue and purple and different other colors for different items here, which blends it in with this 5 o'clock shadow. That is a little bit of a description right there. So I'm going to highlight that and copy it. Control-C or Command-C. Double-click on Dirty Face. It opens it up in the, in the Master Catalog, and I'm going to paste it in there. Blends in with his 5 o'clock shadow. Add that description. Go back to the script. On the workbench sits lots of equipment. I'm not going to show you this whole breakdown of this entire script, but I'm just going to show some uh, the, kind of some items. Difference between set dressing and props here. Uh, on the workbench sits lots of equipment. I'm going to highlight lots of equipment here, and I'm going to go down to this. It will be considered what's called set dressing. We're going to add the set dressing. Now the difference between set dressing and props. Set dressing is going to be items that the actor doesn't necessarily ever touch. Once an actor picks something up, if he picks up, if he or she picks up like a metallic ring or something like that, that just suddenly became a prop. But lots of equipment, the stuff they're sitting around all over the place, that's going to be mainly set dressing. And one thing I forgot up here is a workbench. That's going to be a set piece right there. So we're going to go to set and add that to it um, as part of the set. So we need a workbench. Okay, now lots of equipment. Here is a list of lots of the equipment right there. I can just double click on that. I can copy that, double click on lots of equipment, put that in the master catalog, go back to the script, and continue. So notice that this isn't highlighted right here, but that's part of the description because that is basically a description of lots of equipment right there. There's also an outlet strip full of plugs, so on. So I'm going to continue this breakdown here. I want to find something that's going to be done here that is going to be, I want to find something down here that's going to be a prop. Down here, we've got Cabes turns his, turns his back to the workbench and picks up a mason jar full of nuts and bolts. So I'm going to highlight this mason jar, and we're going to add that as a prop. He picks it up. He uses it. That is a prop. Add that full of nuts and bolts. We're going to copy this, go to mason jar, and we're going to paste that in the description there. And there we go. And that is the process. You're going to basically do this from beginning to end until you have every single scene broken down. Let me show you a script that has been completely broken down. Okay, here's a script that's been broken down. And what we can do is if we scroll through this, we're going to see all these different color-coded items. And one kind of cool thing with, with Celtics is you can just take your cursor and click into any of these scenes, and it will show you a basic breakdown of the items needed for that scene there. So I can go and click in any scene, and boom, there's the list right there. Same over here. You can double-click on these scenes, and it will show you the list. Once you click inside here in any one of these scene numbers, it will show you the items down here. Let's go to the master catalog. There's 72 items needed to shoot this short film here. And there are all the items in my master catalog there. So props, characters, set pieces, just everything that's needed to shoot this entire film in a master catalog. 
The next step that the first AD is going to take for the pre-production process is once that breakdown is completely finished, you're going to be printing the PDF to be sending to, to all the departments, all the major departments, the following for each individual scene into their respect into their respective folders. I say that into their respective folders because we're going to create these folders. Things that you need for it once the production actually starts here and for pre-production for everybody to get ready. First of all, you're going to need the breakdowns. Uh, once a production starts and you it's scheduled and say we're going to be shooting tomorrow, the uh, scenes maybe one, five, and ten, you're going to grab the elements and the sides and print them out, and they're going to be given to the director and the DP. The sides are going to be given to the actor, and the breakdown is going to be given to the artist department. To generate individual scene reports, all these tabs down here belong to this one screenplay right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the tab reports, and these reports belong to this screenplay right here. In fact, we can change the name of the screenplay. Let me right click on this and rename it and call this Death of Me Production. So I know you know this is the one that's actually getting shot. So I'm going to go to reports, and here are the reports for the Death of Me Production right here. So if you're going to be putting out dialogue for the actors, they don't need all the blocking because they're going to be going through the blocking with the director. They're going to be needing dialogue for the day that they're shooting. When the day of the shoot happens, and say we are shooting scenes, let's see, let's say we're shooting all the home scenes here. So we've got scenes three and four. First of all, three is probably an exterior. It is an exterior, so it does not have um, any dialogue. It just shows an exterior of the home. But there's Brian's home right there at night, and here's the dialogue for that scene. As we move down to Brian's bedroom, here's all the dialogue for that scene right there, and it doesn't have the description or the action in between. To print these out here for the actors, you're going to select this. First of all, every individual scene, you're going to need these separately here. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the first one that I have the dialogue for, scene four here, and I'm going I'm on a Mac here, so I'm going to do Command P, and you can actually choose a PDF right here, and you can save it as a PDF. Uh, PCs will do this. You can print to PDF if you have Adobe Acrobat Professional in, uh, installed. If you have the Creative Cloud, you will be able, you can install Adobe Acrobat Professional for free, and you will have this print to PDF option right under your printout on your PC. Right here, I'm going to do Save as a PDF. I'm going to find a location here. I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to make three different folders here. First one, I'm going to call this Dialog, or actually, you call this Sides. They're called Sides for the actors, and now I can name this. This is scene four, sides. Save that, and let's grab 15 as well. Print, save as a PDF. I'm going to go to scene five, sides. Save that, and I've got those two printed out. Now if we go to our desktop and take a look at this, pre-production prep, actually it's right here, to sides. Double click on that. Here is our dialogue for scene four. Here is our dialogue for scene five. Now these can be given out to the actors, and the actors can kind of quickly go over their dialogue, and they have it in their hands. Okay, now let's do elements as well. The elements are going to be for the director and for the director of photography. And they can even go to actors when they're going to be rehearsing. So I'm going to go to elements here, and elements is basically your entire script here. So let's say the same thing. We're shooting scenes four and five. I'm going to highlight four. And under reports notice, it's just basically got all the description, the dialogue, and everything here. So I can do Command P to print. Go to Save as a PDF. I'm going to make a new folder, and this is going to call it be called Elements. And under Elements, I'm going to save Scene Four, Elements. Save that, and I'll do the same thing to scene five, scene six, and let me open this up and show you what we've got here. So under elements, I'll have all the scenes, the elements that we have. These are individual PDFs, one for each individual scene. And you'll do that to the entire movie. So within each folder here, let's see, I've got a total under this script here, we've got a total of 22 scenes. So under sides, you'll have 22 of these items here. Under Elements, you'll have 22 of those items as well, one per scene. And now let's show you a breakdown. So for the art department, for them to decide what props and locations, makeup, and everything else that's needed to shoot this movie, I'm going to go into Reports once again, and we're going to go under Scene Breakdown. You can tell it to do all of them, or you can tell it to do individual scenes. I'd say do these as individual scenes and print each one out. I'm going to go under Bookstore, and we're going to do this to the entire movie. You're going to do Command-P, Save as a PDF. It's kind of boring, but this is the way it goes. I'm going to go to my desktop, create a new folder. We're going to call this Breakdown. 
under breakdown, we're going to call this scene one breakdown. Save that. And actually, um, I'm, I'm going to undo that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do scene breakdown with description. So it has all the description as well. And what you will notice here, let me open up a different script. As we go under the script here and we go to reports, and we go under script breakdown with description. Notice as we go to these different scenes here. One thing I want you to notice between the difference between scene breakdown and scene breakdown with description, I would choose the one with description because if you've done anything with description here, let's go under script. I'm going to add a description like this suitcase has to be a specific type of suitcase. Uh, so let's go down to suitcase, double click on it, go to the master catalog and say this must be a suitcase from the 1980s. It doesn't have to be, but let's just say this is an example. And we go back to our script here, go to reports, and go to that scene 11 where that suitcase was. You'll notice it has the suitcase as a prop here, but under italics it's got the description there. So just notice that this italics is added as a description. If you don't click on the scene breakdown with description, it won't show that description. It'll just say suitcase. So I pretty much choose, always choose scene breakdown with description. So we're going to print each one of these out here. So I've got scene one already printed out, scene two. Scene three, scene four, scene three, there's nothing on there, scene three, scene four. And I'll just keep doing this till I have all these scenes printed to PDF. Now these can be emailed out to people. They can be uploaded to a server if you're working off of a server where the art department can have access to them. If you're doing a Google Drive, they can be sent to the Google Drive where people, everybody can have access to them as well. And there you go. And then once you're done, you go, and I'm not having them all right here, but I'm going to grab all these items right here. And I'm going to put this under the death of me production. And I'm going to grab all these items and stick them inside of that folder there. So now these can be uploaded to a server. They can be uploaded to where, where people can access them. Let's take a look at our breakdown items here. Scene 1 breakdown. There are all the items that we need to shoot that scene. It's got the location, the characters, book with the cover. We've got a PR photograph. We've got people. And we've got everything that we need to shoot that, that scene. There's scene 2. Scene I don't have scene 3 there, but scene 4, scene 5. And you'll see all the items you need that can be sent to the art department to start gathering. So the next step is uh, to create a production schedule. So a couple things that we're going to do now. First of all, we're going to add 8s, and we're also going to be adding our script days as well. Let's show what those are. So to start a schedule here, we are going to go up to this area right here under the project li library and hit an add item. And under add item, we are going to highlight a production schedule. Right now, it won't let you hit create a production schedule because it's telling you to select a script out of this project. Because you, remember, you can do multiple scripts here in a Celtic project. So I'm going to choose the script. And I'm going to hit OK. And it will open up a calendar with all the scripts up here. Now, let's talk about before you actually start scheduling, I would recommend adding days and adding eighths to the script. Some of these have already been done here. But basically, what eighths are is you, you think of a page as being eight inches long. Because uh, sometimes when you shoot, you're not going to shoot an entire page, but you might shoot half a page or a quarter of a page. And that's important in scheduling because a quarter of a page does not take as long to shoot as a full page. So a page. So a half page does not equal a page, basically. And this is measured in eighths. Up here, you see that this is three and three eighths. That's basically, that's basically three pages plus three eighths. That's kind of a long scene to shoot. In here, Cabe's house, it's just one eighth. I'm going to guess this is going to be a really quick shoot, maybe like an hour, for the camera to set up and just shoot an exterior of a home. But three pages and three eighths, this might take two days to shoot because that's almost four pages there. That's almost that's three and a half pages right there. The way you add your eights is you basically go to each scene, double click on it, and you can just type them in right here. Also, script day. Every time a day changes inside of a script, it becomes a new script day. So if something takes place, let's say one scene takes place one day, and then a year later, the next scene happens. Even if it's a year later, that is basically two script days. The first scene, and then after it cuts to a year later, the year later will be script day two. It's how many days you actually see on the screen uh, over the course of the script or over the course of the movie. So this is day one here. So I'm going to add that as well. It's going to show, and that's going to be important for the art department as well, so they know what sort of costume, what the character is going to look like at any stage of the script. But I'm going to open up my elements here. Sorry, I've got two different scripts going here. But let's take a look at this element script here. And this is from this from the Death of Me script. But let's take a look at this right here. This is, that is about 5 eighths right there. 
So you're going to look at each one. You're going to open up each one of these element script and look at how much that equals there. That's about five eighths of your page right there. So that's going to be five eighths to shoot. Same as the cave. I didn't print out all these scripts, but this one is three pages. Let's go to our script here and look. And we're going to go to type PC, typeset PDF, and this will kind of show this actually how it's going to print out. And we're going to look at our scene one here. Here, scene one. That's one page, two pages, three full pages, three four pages. So that's actually close to four full pages right there. So that somebody typed that in wrong there. So that's actually going to be about three and five eighths. And this might have been done before it was actually finished here. So uh, but then you go to the next scene here under script and under the next scene right there. That's about one eighth of a page right there. Close to maybe close to two eighths, but more like one eighth. So one eighth. So that's accurate. And you're going to go through each one of these and add those eighths into each scene. And once you're done with that, and you've added your days as well, look at the script day, when that takes place on what day of the script. You're going to add those script days, you're going to add the, the eights, and now you're going to use these eighths to schedule. I haven't done all of them here, but now you can start scheduling. And you can say, okay, here's a garage scene right there. That's four pages, it's probably going to take a while. We're on the 12th here, I'm going to say we are starting to shoot this on the 21st. I'm going to add that to the 21st right there. And notice up here, once you've added, it will say that this has been scheduled over here. So now that's been scheduled and that's four pages so that's going to, going to take a while to shoot. So we're going to call this an all-day shoot. I'm going to go, uh, we're going to start at 9 a.m. and the way you get into this is you basically double click on this time down here and it always allots two hours but you're going to change this. You're going to go, we're going to start at 10 a.m. or actually let's say 9 a.m. and this is, go, we're going to go to let's say 3 o'clock to shoot that. So there we go. So we've got that scheduled from not for, for most of the day right there. I'm going to go to the next one. And actually, here's another garage scene right there. That's one and five eight. So I'm going to schedule these kind of close to each other because they're, they both take, in the, take place in the garage. I'm going to change the time a little later. So that's been scheduled. Let's go to Cave's house. Now look at these right here. These two scenes are both in Cave's house. I can schedule this. Let's go to Thursday and schedule that for Thursday and schedule this house scene for Thursday as well because it takes place in, inside the house. Here's another garage scene. And this we could probably do on the next day. I think this is like another another page here, so we could actually schedule these two together. So now we can change the times. Once I get all these scheduled, it will show everything scheduled up here. You can go and double click and change the times and get those scheduled. So you will continue to do that to every every single scene is scheduled for the entire shoot. And then you can send that schedule off to everybody. And I'd say go ahead and create duplicate that schedule onto a Google Calendar or something like that so everybody can access it and everybody can see when those scenes are going to be taking place. So on Tuesday the 21st, we're shooting scene one. Tuesday the 22nd, we're shooting scenes three and five. And you're going to be trying to be as efficient as possible. Notice we scheduled the house scenes together and the garage scenes together, all, all together here. So just be wise about how you schedule your scenes. So the next section here, schedule the days being as efficient as possible. Place similar, similar locations on the same shooting day if possible. Of course, we mentioned create the shooting hours based on those days, based on the eighths of each scene, which we've done. So what's going to happen now is the day before a shoot, uh, let's say actually this business day here, the 21st on this Friday before, uh, call sheets are going to be distributed to everybody, informing them what scenes are taking place, when the, everybody is going to be called to set, and uh, what time they'll be there, and what scenes are shooting. It gives you all that information. So we're, we're going to look at the call sheet here. Here's an example of a call sheet right here. So this call sheet right here will have some very particular information. First of all, what scenes are going to be shot here? This is just scene number one that's going to be taking place on Monday. General uh, crew call time, we're going to say 9 a.m. So when people first see this call sheet here, the first thing that's going to pop out is we're shooting on Monday. I'm supposed to be there at 9 a.m. and we're shooting scene one. You can fill out some of this other information, but um, most importantly here, we're going to say director, the name of the director, the name of the producer, name of anybody else involved on the production, and then the time that they show up and the time that they will be done. The director is going to be there, let's say, at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. and then the director will be done at, we'll say, 4 p.m. Actually, let's put 3 p.m. because when the when the director's done, it might be scheduled to have a rehearsal for the next day's shoot right after that. So the talent is going to be uh, the actual actor's name, say Fred, oops, I misspelled it, Johnson, and then uh, the name of the character here will have, uh, his name's Ted in the movie, 
We're going to go to the phone number, we'll put the in time and the out time, and the actor will probably show up for makeup at 9 a.m. and then we'll be done at 3 p.m. as well. So once that's filled out with all the crew over here and the cast over here, then you send that off, you upload it to your server or wherever people access and it gets emailed to everybody. If you're on set, these get printed out and handed to the actors and the crew so they know where they're going to be the, the next day. And you'll have the location right here. If you're on a sound stage, you put the sound stage number there. If you're on a location, you put the location address. So they know what scene, where they're shooting, when they're shooting, what time, and who is supposed to be there from when to when. And then those will be distributed, printed out, and emailed so everybody has a copy of them. I now want to go into director of photography and the director, kind of the pre-production process for the director of photography and the director uh, to get all these items scheduled and worked out here.